coming from Google, coming from Tesla, coming from Carnegie Mellon. You know, what do you all bring to the table that's different from one another? Well, I think that's actually the most exciting part is we are very different. So Drew has been doing machine learning since before it was this kind of big thing that's very sexy, right? And he's been doing that in robotics. Uh, Sterling has actually shipped products. So with, uh, with Autopilot and Model X. Uh, and then, you know, with my experience at Google, you know, we had gone a long way down the road with this automated vehicle technology. So having the chance to pull the three of those experiences together was really exciting. You ran Google's self-driving car unit for a long time. What are you doing differently at Aurora than you did at Google? Well, first, we're building it much more quickly. Mm. So when we started at Google, it was not clear that this was going to be a thing. And so we, we were a little more cautious in how we built out the team and you know, it took a lot of time to learn. Now we have that experience we get to build from. And we've got these, these three great leaders and then this core of amazing talent around them that we're expanding much more quickly than then. It's interesting you say that because some observers would say, well, Google still seems to be taking a long time. You know, What is taking so long? to get to market? Well, self-driving cars are really hard to build, it turns out. You know, we all drive cars every day, and so we kind of take it for granted. Um, but getting to the point where the vehicles are actually better than a human, it's actually a lot of work. And so there's all of this um, hidden work that happens in trying to get from working 99% of the time to 99.9999% mm -hmm. of the time. I rode a Google self-driving car in 2011, and I rode in GM self-driving car just a few weeks ago. And to me, the experiences weren't that different. The technology didn't seem to have advanced that much, and I don't know if that's the difference between Google and GM, or because this technology does move slowly. You know, what would you guess? So, so the hard part about this is that the, the tricky things happen very rarely. So what we're trying to do with this technology is save lives on the road. Uh, and you know, the, it's a tragedy that 38,000 Americans die every year. But it turns out you have to drive about 85 million miles before someone dies. And so if you drive around the city um, for an hour, the vehicle might feel like it's driving really well, um, but you've driven you know, just 10 miles or 15 miles, and so you don't really know whether it's handling the very difficult cases. And, and that's where people are spending the time, is on those rare events. And those rare events, how does that compare to human-driven cars? <laughs> well, well that's, the, that's the thing. For humans, uh, those rare events happen. You get in a, an accident that gets reported to police about once every 100,000 miles. Mm. Um, someone gets killed on America's road about one in a one and a quarter people per 100 million miles. Um, the self-driving cars, we're still assessing where they are in that spectrum, and that's what people are pushing to get to is these big numbers of performance. And how much beyond 100,000, let's say, do you think a self-driving car can get? Oh, I, I think over time we can, we can eliminate almost all of these accidents. Um, and the key is going to be finding a, a, a threshold where we're okay having them on the road so we can start to save, live, save lives. because. As soon as they're um, incrementally better than a person, then that's a person's life saved the, that would have been killed in a traffic accident otherwise. And so we need to find this right balance of um, appropriate skepticism, but safety uh, and speed to market. There have been a lot of partnerships and announcements in this space. You guys are partnering with Volkswagen and Hyundai. Why them? Oh, they're amazing companies, right? These are both companies that have world reach. At Aurora, our mission is to deliver this technology safely, quickly, and broadly. And it's hard to imagine companies that would have a bigger impact than, than those two. We know you talked to Volkswagen during your time at Google. What does Aurora offer that Waymo doesn't? Well, I really would like to talk about what, what Aurora offers, uh, and that is we have this great team of people, uh, and we're really approaching the industry in the spirit of partnership. So we, we know that we can do good work on the self-driving systems, and we have an immense amount of respect for what Volkswagen can do on building the vehicles and how complicated that is. And so if we can partner with them, I think we can get this technology to market you know, quickly, and we can start saving lives and doing all these other wonderful things. So quickly means when? Uh, as soon as it's done. Uh, I think within the next five years you'll see this. Did they take a stake in Aurora, Volkswagen, or Hyundai? Uh, we're, we're not talking about the financial terms, uh, no. So can Aurora succeed on its own, do you think, or does it have to be part of a bigger car company or a bigger tech company? We believe we can succeed on our own through partnership, but the mission of the company is to deliver this technology as quickly and safely as possible. And so as we move through the, you know, through the, the world, we'll look at what options are in front of us and we'll pick the one that fulfills that mission. So looking at the broader uh, self-driving car industry, you've got giants like Tesla and Google. 
you know, how do you see this industry evolving? Do you see a winner? Do you see many winners? Do you see a particular tech giant forging ahead? Uh, I think that there's going to be a handful of winners at the end of the day. This is a very complicated technology, and so at some point it'll be good enough, and uh, at that point, you know, the partners will want to use it, and we'll see these safety benefits, economic benefits, improvements for the city around us, uh, and at that point, um, the company that can bring the technology to scale will start to see you know, improving improvements on that. I think there'll probably be a handful of these companies because there's probably going to be one or two per continent uh, because it's going to be an important technology for, for each, of, you know, each of the major players to kind of have a stake in. By all accounts, Apple got to this market late. Will Apple have a stake in this market? I wouldn't count them out. They're certainly, um, you know, an incredible company. Uh, you know, any of these tech companies have so much capability, and all the automotive guys do too. So we'll see how it plays out. Speaking of the cultural climate of the moment, one of Aurora's stated values is no jerks. What exactly does that mean? It means that we're solving a really hard problem, and we don't have time for interpersonal garbage, mm -hmm. right? We we want people that have divergent opinions. We want them to come and debate those. But we want it to be about how do we solve the problem, not treating people poorly, not you know overinflated egos. Like let's work well together and let's respect everyone. On that note, how would you describe the competition for self-driving car talent? I mean, we hear it's incredibly fierce. Uh, how fierce is it, and how do you get them to come work for you? It is. It's incredibly aggressive right now. It's very hard to find good talent. Um, the way we uh, think about it is let's give people a mission that matters. Um, let's give them a workplace they enjoy and great, um, great peers to work with and learn from uh, and teach. Uh, and then the rest of it takes care of itself from there. I think people really want to do something that matters.